Hello, thanks for joining me for our first midweek devotional today. We're going to be looking at a passage from Matthew and it's Matthew chapter six, verses one through six, and then verses 16 through 21. I'm reading from the New International Version today. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men that they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your heads and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your father, who is unseen. And your father, who sees what you what is done in secret, will reward you. The scripture is an excellent one for Lent. We oftentimes have it on Ash Wednesday as one of our main scriptures for kind of how to orient ourselves spiritually to this whole season of Lent. This is Jesus talking to the disciples about the difference between what he's calling them to do and what is commonly done in religious circles. We're looking at this together as a way to fast in humility. So when we give something up, be it chocolate or coffee or TV or Facebook or checking the news, I think I gave that up one year, uh, whatever it is that might be distracting us or that we would miss if we were to stop doing it or stop having it, the idea is that giving that up would give us space for God to do some work, that we would create a longing or a hunger in ourselves that we would use as a motivation to spend more time with God to grow our relationships with Him. However, Sometimes, when it comes to practicing our piety and doing it in ways that others might take note of, we, like the disciples and the people around them, kind of fall into um, some not great habits, or we lose the focus of what our piety should be all about. Piety being like a, a sort of very serious and sometimes overt display of religious, like, intention and um, practice. So my question for us looking at the scripture is, where are we ignorant of our attempts to save ourselves? And what I mean by that is, you know, the issue here for Jesus is that people who are doing these things that he describes, and it's three big things, they're fasting, praying, and they're giving alms, so they're giving money. And these are good things to do. These are things that religious people are expected to do. We expect that of each other. We expect it of ourselves that we will, you know, abstain from things because we want to spend more time with God, that we will pray uh, and do it often, and that we will give money to those in need. And that is something that the Jewish people at the time would have been expected to do too. And also it's not a bad look in civic life in ancient Rome either to do these things, to be generous and be, you know, noble in that way. What Jesus is saying is that the motive and the manner that these things happen really, really, really matters the most to God. It's not a competition to enter into to see how holy you can be as compared to your friends on Instagram or Facebook or whatever it is. It's not how you know much money you can outgive the other people around you with. It's not necessarily about praying the best prayers, the most elaborate prayers, the most coherent prayers. It's instead about the intention that you have, right? It, Jesus says to do it modestly and do it in secret as a way to prevent um, any sort of other influence from creeping in to these practices of piety, these ways to get closer to God. You know, he wants us, as his disciples, to have a practice of faith that is not self-aggrandizing. We don't do it in a way that could make us look better than we actually are or tempt us to do so. Um, we aren't called to serve or give out of guilt even, or martyrdom or a need for control. We're instead asked to focus on the love we have for God and for God's people, 
and a sincere calling to serve and a sincere calling to pursue justice on behalf of others. We're called to the higher calling, if you will. When we are asked to fast in humility, we're asked to do it so that we can stay very connected to what God is doing and how God you know, is calling us into relationship with him. We run into the risk of turning the means into the end if we're not paying attention during Lent. We can sort of forget that it's not about doing Lent perfectly or fasting absolutely perfectly so much as it's about making space for God to move in us so that we can grow closer to God. The ways that we do this are not the point. The point is that we are making space and time for God in our lives on a daily basis in Lent. And we can laugh at these images that Jesus gives us even. The idea of a fanfare after turning in your offering envelope or, you know, someone who is just so exhausted from giving up coffee for Lent that, you know, they stand on the street corner and just look terrible and everyone sees them and thinks, oh my, what a pious person. They must really love Jesus. It is kind of funny. So friends, I ask you today as we finish our time together, consider what it is that you might be called to do differently today. What is it that God might be prompting in you? How is it that you can look at your own practice of spirituality during Lent, whether you're fasting or not, maybe you're taking something up. Is what you're doing bringing you closer to God? Is it helping you to make space where you can get closer to God? Remember, we're called to do it modestly. We're called to do our practices in secret sometimes too, because God sees, and that's really what matters. Whatever we're doing, hopefully we are doing it to please the Lord, and he is the one who sees and will reward accordingly. You know, if we store up our treasures on earth, the words, the praise, the, you know, good position amongst others who are good at doing good, well, that's not bad, but that's kind of all that there is if that's what we're going for. If we're going for a deeper relationship with God, though, may the practices that you have taken up or put down for this season help bring you closer to to him today. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the season of Lent. Thank you for the invitation to spend time intentionally getting closer to you, making more space in our lives for our relationship with you to grow. Lord, help us to focus on you. May whatever practices or you know, ways that we have found to spend time not take over. May we not be distracted by the form and instead be reminded of the focus. The Lord, work in us, work through us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining me for this brief Lenten devotion, and we'll see you next week in some form or fashion. Same time, probably the same place. Bye.